お願いします。お願いします。Just hold them out to the sides. Nice tight circles one way. Okay, go the other way. Great, it's working across the way a little bit. to the back. Okay, and you're gonna close them in, open them out, close them in, open them out. Good. A little bit of bounce through the knees and the body. <clears throat> Good. All right, okay, just a little bit. Twisting through, just keeping the hands kind of on the horizontal. Okay, loosening out all the rotation, the arms come to the body. Playing with the arms, throwing them up, letting them come back down. That's it, good. Great, just playing with the feet, just opening up the body into more of a hammy position. Not so much focused on the feet, more focused on the hips kind of opening out in the final movement as the arms come back to the body. <clears throat> Think about sinking lower into the hips. Good. Right, and then just playing with it front and back, just switching, switching them out.
Perfect. Great, and then nice and slow, just take into a rotation. So don't worry about like a full 180 degree, and just think about sinking the weight in. And find the rotation through the hip, trying to link that rotation in the hip now with the drop. Mm. Rotating. 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 Just playing this one. This one's really stupid. It's, oh, it's stupid. It's really silly. And uh, what it's to do is to really get the arms to, to, to relax through. So you basically just spin with it. So as you do it, you're gonna you're gonna elongate the rotation part, and you're basically just gonna let the arms spin out. So you do like this, and then let them go out. So what you want to do in this one, if I if I kind of throw the arms into this move, like like this, the arms basically lead the movement. So doing this kind of move won't won't not really won't be possible. Would be really difficult, but I have a sense of doing that. But you want the sense that you're just floating the arms out. And imagine if, the best thing to imagine this is if you've got like two buckets of water, two big bottles of water. Like, oh, I've got a full and empty. I've only got one full. Like something like this. So imagine as you go, you're actually the, the arm, the joint that's actually relaxed. I'm not trying to the water bottle. I'm just trying to lift it through the through the. I'm just trying to raise it through the movement. So it's it's a silly exercise. But it's just to get the shoulders to kind of release. And they will release if I let them go through with it. This is actually a really good exercise in, in uh, preparation for if you do a, if, if you ever do a two-man attack. Yeah, not so good for <laughs> if you get dizzy. <laughs> but just play with but yeah, okay. <laughs> right. And just come back now to this one, but just have that same sensation in the arms as that you come in, especially now this sense as you come up. So you've got a slightly more of an active movement. So it's less of that now. It's like that. So the tendency now is to raise, to, is to lift my own arms off the ground. But <clears throat> again, imagine you've got, imagine the weight's kind of raising the sinking down the weight. So the key things like how I raise the arms and how I lower them. So you're actually looking for need to integrate the body work into it. Again, if you think that sword works exactly the same dynamic that you're looking for. So you're not kind of carrying the arms, you're looking to use the ground, use gravity to just augment the structure a little bit. And this is easy to do lightly, but imagine if you imagine you've got something heavy in the hands, it also helps to kind of add a little bit more structure to it. Great, and then you're just going to slightly exaggerate the downwards part. So you've got this the classic the Ribinaga, although not so classic, the, uh, the popular Ribinaga where you kind of come down to the ground, come up with it. So don't worry about the coming up part, just, just the down part. So you're going to kind of come up with it. And then you're gonna really, really drop down with the body, dropping down with it. And just let the hands kind of drop into the floor and kind of scrape the ground. So it's just <clears throat> now bringing a little bit of lower body work. Don't worry so much about the technique, it's more about that feeling in the body of being able to drop the body and let the arms follow with it. Nice and careful. Just take it as low as you kind of comfortable with. 
That's okay. If you do it something like a wet, something like this, so you want the sense that you're coming up with it, and then it's in the row in this rotation, I'm actually catching it, catching its motion down because naturally it wants to drop down. So I'm just, I'm just basically guiding the arms in, just guiding it in. In terms of technique, you would just add a little bit of pressure in the structure from the top onto a weak part, either the arm or the neck. So in this case, you think you're kind of guiding the movement down into the ground. So, yeah, we go from this. Good. So this is similar, but it's it's working at a slightly different angle. So um, this is usually one of the first techniques I teach people, which is basically to get to the back of the person here. You take around the neck and you just drop them down into the ground like this. So what you're looking for now is an entry, in that same sense here. Now, I imagine the hands are going to like drape onto the person, so it's going to kind of boom, drop down. And then you want to take the back hip down. So now rather than that motion, you're taking this hip back down and into the ground this way. So, so now you're stepping in, stepping back into the rotation, stepping in, stepping back into the rotation. And again, it's going to end up into the ground. But imagine again, you're kind of leading, leading a person to a leading weight into the ground. It's the best thing to imagine. Right. So you're looking like a backward spiral with it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, perfect. Just play with these two movements. So you've either got a sense of coming in, curving it down, or coming in, curving it back this way. The main thing to think about now is as if there's some also someone else in the room. So think of think of being wide with the rooms as well. The main thing I don't want to do in this kind of case, like this, is to start coming to these kind of positions. Where I'm basically everything's turned on onto the onto the, either the weight of the person here and everything else disappears. So have a sense in these kind of movements of the Outside, outside, outside. So if you imagine someone else in the room, this person is down and you can deal with them. Just have a bit of more of a sense of what else is going on or what else could happen.
Okay. Last week, just think about those same kind of dynamics, but basically both both uh, a mote or of the techniques, or if they've got one, they don't, it doesn't matter, but they, they kind of apply to this kind of dynamic. So this sense of you look at like something like an ikkyo coming in, finding the movement, coming in, finding the ground with it. So the sense of entry into it and in finding the ground. And then it's really just a matter of, we were talking with Bernie said about the distance in Aikido. But Aikido's got a really specific distance and we're training different distances, obviously, but they're very fine. So if you think about Ikkyo, Ikkyo, Sankyo, or Kotegaishi, Shihonai, Iriminai, they're all working very slight differences. But just imagine now, if you want to go to techniques, go like Ikkyo, Iriminai. You've got these big levers in the arms coming in. Or if you take it to like a Nikkyo, start with closing it down, pressing through it, or something like Thank you. And then in a little bit closer, controlling. But just imagine that, stick to the other exercise, or imagine you're actually taking techniques with the, with the arms, and it's just a matter of where you're taking the body in this kind of dynamic. You remain now is here. So some of the techniques will be a little bit further out. Basically, just a matter of where you're connecting with the limb or body. They all pretty much follow a similar dynamic. Entering, establishing contact, taking the person down. Perfect. Yeah, so if you think about those big, like the big six techniques, or the, the main techniques, Kyo Nikyo, Sankyo, Kotegashi, Shihonai, Iriminai, they all, they all work on the same principles, or they, 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 and they're just the matter of how big the arc is in the movement and how close the contact is and which limb I'm using to kind of do it. But they pretty much work on the same kind of thought, apart from a few handcuffs. But then if you look at something like Koshinai or Kaitenai or Kokunai, these kind of other three, the kind of advanced three in the system, they work totally different principles. So that's, you know, why they're a little bit more advanced. So um, we'll go to the Kaitenai, just go to this, forget the others. So the, 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 the main thing with Kaitenai in a sense is you're kind of entering in, but the main thing is the sense of entangling the body through it. So the, the main Kaitenai form, the sense of coming in, coming in and wrapping the body up into this kind of space and then either pinning them or, or projecting them away. But you want the sense now in this one, as you come up, the sense is the sense of using the spirals to wrap and entangle the person up. So it's more of a, of a kind of trapping room. I usually think about, if you think, if you know the ketami was it, or if you think about locking the joints up, especially taking the shoulders to the back, 
these movements all the, the, they become like shorter versions of the, the kaitanagis. So if you think about these kind of movements, I'm basically wrapping the body up and then pinning them. <clears throat> the kaitanagis is really nice and obvious that I find the movement and I trap them in the movement. And then the person basically open for knees, for kicks, for projections, or for pins. So just play with this idea now. A little bit of kaitenai. This is the uchi variation. So this is a big rotation inside. Yeah, difficult in a way with these big moves. So we're, we're going to simplify it, make it really easy. So, well, actually, it's not so easy, but you've got to imagine now. Imagine a, a, kata, a kata grip, a shoulder grip. This apparently is one of a, a, one of our sensei's favorite techniques. I think. So you can see it. You can see it a lot in the videos when he does it. It's very direct, and it basically leads into any kill thing. So it's a really, it's a really nice kind of technique. So it's a kinagai technique. But imagine someone's coming in right for the shoulder. As they come in, you're going to enter up through it, and this hand's going to extend up through the arm. You take this, and then you twist the body, and you cut down on the arm, and you're you're going to cut down. This is quite tricky to remember. But the person's coming in. You want to get the joint in this position. And then you're cutting on, imagine it's cutting inside here and then cutting it down into an acre. So we've obviously got the, 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 kata, the kata technique where we come out, open it out, come through, find this. This is really much more direct now. So the person's coming in, you're gonna enter off the line here, rotate through it and then find the cut down with the arm. So you go in underneath, in underneath, rotate through, and then cut down with it. And you can take it into an kill. I think about sword work with this, so this is really, a, this is a kind of classic application of sword work. Entry, raise, rotate, cut. Yeah, the main thing with this, if you're kind of struggling with a okay is or what, I, what, I, what am I quite doing, just think about sword work in itself. So you can imagine that the, the hands of the sword, you come up underneath, up underneath, and then you're rotating the body and then cutting down with it this way. So just imagine you come. The key thing is to kind of raise up, raise up extension, rotate the body, and then the sensor of applying the hips down into it. So you can do this with a sword. A bit more expensive, but you've got that sense of raise up, twist through it, and then drop through it this way. That sense of cutting with the, with the body. Something like that. Right. Nice, 
Yeah, and the main thing, just a one more point with this one, the main thing is the center of entry in. So this technique only works if I close the distance. So <clears throat> it won't work if I do it kind of like this. So I've basically got still a person's pressure here. And I'm, I'm basically, I'm still on the line. So they're basically coming and press through. So you can also add an attempt to this as well. So you can think about, as you come in, this comes in, this comes straight to the face, it comes in here. And then I close the distance in, wrap the arm, and then pin them down. And then you've got them in a the mini kill pin. But just imagine that the key part, if you think about like that show the achievement we're doing, basically an adaption of that. So it's coming up underneath. You can either strike to the head or the body, and then put down with it. It's in but it needs a real kind of positive entry in into the attack, just off the line, just a little bit off the line, just enough that you don't receive the, the kind of clash. Great, and the very last point, this is really relevant, so we'll, we'll take this into the sword, but the, also the, the, the point of the, or one of the key points with the kite if you think about this long form, is the connection of the elbow to the hips. So the sense as you drop through, rotate, that the, the hip and the elbow are really working together. It's the same, just more condensed now, but the key, the key one, as you come up to this one, is this, as you rotate the hip, the elbow coming with it. So the sense of, like the hip, drags the elbow through it and then cutting down with it. But just get that sense in that, especially the rotation, because if I lose this connection, this, 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 the technique is weak. so think of really passing and the movement over that and then coming in. So all the basic techniques have these, <clears throat> these kind of motions, but very, very clear. In this case, a little bit more, a little bit more circle through into that movement. But the main thing is linking the elbow work to the hip rotations. Yes. So. Yes. Okay, perfect. We will go to some bottom work. Sure. <laughs> so we start as usual, just with the first of just. And considering all these points, especially now the center of the hip, the elbow working together. Especially now you want the feeling like the hip is kind of dragging the elbow down. If you imagine like a string tied between them. Wink. And down.
just a little bit sideways, but really relevant. Think about now, this is really related to soul cuts. I, get, I don't want to sense that the body's being pulled out through that, through that focus. So just play now, going back to this idea of dropping to the ground, play with the, the sense you want the feet in this kind of position, and you want the hands on like an acute position, and you want to apply the way, and then think about dropping down to the ground. But I should still really be basically in balance. What I, what I want to feel here is like that. And then this is a really strange kind of movement because I'm basically out of balance. So imagine as you go and you're going to kind of boom, press down into it. And then you can choose how to come down. It doesn't actually matter. You can go down with the knee. But I should really be in balance. Through. And the extension is going boom, into the ground rather than whoop, away from when you do this kind of movement. Just pull a little bit, just lower into the ground. And the lower shouldn't really require much adjustment. It should just be a kind of boom. It should just be able to hinge the hip and boom, go down straight into the right. That's it, that's it, that's it, perfect. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's it, great. Right, we'll just do one more variation on this. Think about the Ikkyo technique. So the Ikkyo technique is really hard for, for a lot of reasons. One of them is that as I go in, I need to maintain the extension through the spiral, which is also dropping to the ground this way, which is really tricky. So I've lost lost that. But what you want to feel is really like you've got there, you're cutting down, but rather than this kind of kind of boom, boom, that we used to do in the Amata, I've got to really just keep a sense of the, the rolling, spiraling away. You want to really chain the movement all the way into the ground, just play with it and take it as low as kind of comfortable. It's not about getting to the ground necessarily, it's about taking that spiral towards the ground without losing the, the connection to the arms, to the hips. Right. Right, and also the, the, the problem with the Ikkyo, or this just this movement as well, the tendency is for as I go in, this hand, the close hand to dominate, so this happens, this hand becomes kind of dead. So I have the, I totally have the extension of this arm, but I've got nothing actually here, nothing's happening here. So this happens a lot in my Ikkyo, because I'm trying to work both sides of the body at the same time, very difficult, but keep just keep the sense, most of you've got this, you've got this fine, this, is this extension here's fine. Think of the extension now in this hand. So again, if you go to the Ikkyo, that hand's really contributing to this spiral, which can, which really pulls the person out. Without that, the person's basically dropping back into the stretcher. And you can apply pressure here all day. They'll just be able to, to, to adjust to it. So you need a slight sense of this, this, and that. And it, that needs to stay all the, all the way to the ground. So just play with the sense of this extension. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Coming all the way to the ground. Oh, 
Okay, perfect. Great. We'll just come back into the curve. So take this now into a Zengo. But just again, keep that sense of the extension. Again, that sense of the hip applied without losing the losing the arms to the, from the body. So, and then coming down, rolling over the side. Rolling to the back, sorry. Yeah, playing both sides. Not worried so much about the rotation, but the change of angle. The release of the sword into the movement and the dropping in. So good. We'll take this into number five still, just working with a step straight away. Let it come above, cutting down, opening up the hip for a drop on it. Okay, good. Yeah, the, the main thing to focus on here, focus on really, again, working the line. And that's a kind of specific purpose, not just to kind of carry the line, hold the line, this kind of idea. It's really to get the hips to mobilize. So think of this really as a hip exercise rather than so much a sword work. Again, it's teaching that entry for the, for the, for these kind of, it's teaching the entry, it's teaching the arena kind of movement. So get a sense that what, what you don't want to do in this kind of movement is like the hips come square on. And then come into this in it, later in, in the sword work applied, it's kind of a disaster. So basically stay on the line. Okay. So think of that back, it really is cutting through to the front, cutting through. So you really want to sense that it's kind of slicing through. That really needs that, that front hip to be to be to be open. Otherwise, as it comes through, it will either rise up over it or it'll swing to the side of it. So really think in this case of traveling through the front hip as you do it. So not only are you compressing down, you're also opening the hip out. The good thing is the more I can press down, compress down, the more the hip can release. So they actually work together, these kinds of things, but think about compression down. The joint should then be able to open, hopefully. And this is a major injury that you should be able to find. Nice open hip work. You imagine you're really cutting the line with the hips. That's it, good. Thank you. 
Okay, great. Now, imagine it as the, the attack forms. So you're, you're attacking someone who's basically holding the line with a, with a command set, what, or they're going to kind of attack through in this kind of way. So imagine now that the line's not possible to hold, or I just want to change the line to, to open up an attack. So think about now that the footwork is the same, that the, sorry, the hip works the same, the footwork changes. So you're going to now slightly wedge off the line each time, slightly wedge off the line. Again, the key points of the hip can find the rotation. The, the big problem here is that I want to start to go into a kind of open hip work or a flat hip work. So imagine the hips are really gonna fold into the movement, fold into the movement. So you really want to you know, get off the line, establish a nice clear base. Just imagine it, you don't have to go far off the line. You just want to wedge off it enough that it opens up that, that line of attack. Okay, perfect. We'll take this into a little bit of number seven. And again, just go back to uh, basic line work. So you're working the basic. So the tradition is going to come in back to the top. And then you're going to switch the hip. Find the, find the ski. You're coming down the line. Ski down the line. Strike on the line. Ski down the line. Just play a little bit with this. The, the, so the same dynamic later is used with the Joe in terms of Gerangashi, but it's a it's a bigger, a bigger, more expansive room. But the same principle play. As you go through it, just play with the Balkan as if it's the Joe. You want to sink into the hip and let the hip come through. And in this case, the main difference is I'm applying the power from the ground in this leg. So this leg's what's this leg is what, what's um, um, feeding the movement. So you can obviously later, and we do later, place the foot and then find the strike. This is used more for a block. In terms of the attack form, you're looking for sinking into this hip and coming through with it. So the body's behind the weapon in this case, as opposed to Jochen, which is coming in there with that foot. In this one, you're in the back, there, that one. And this later, we'll go to the, 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 the ski just after this, but again, it's that same dynamic. The weight's coming from the from that front foot, front leg. And the key is that hip dynamic, being able to open it, but ground it. Open it, ground it, coming through. Just play with it. You've got the ski and you've got the, the get engage. The get engage just makes it really kind of obvious. So that's it. Nice. Thank <sighs> you. 
Good. And again, just taking it back into the right into the Subaru again. So the key thing again, imagine as you come through, the power is going to be rooted from the ground here, and then the body's kind of will fall behind. That foot's not far behind the movement, but the, the, the main the main problem is I don't want to be out of the ground in that back foot. So I want that back foot to really root the movement, and then it comes in. Find the cut, root the movement, it comes in. So it's quite a complex movement when you kind of break it down a little bit. The timing in the feet is really So we'll work on the, the very beginning of the, the second Kumite Tachi, so just the very first couple of movements and then some responses to it. So the, the attack side first, you've got this raise up, which comes in. So you're raising up here, and it's the point, in this case, just as I get just above the face, and the other person's just with the face, that's when the knee becomes really clear target, or the leg becomes really clear target. You're going to wedge in off the line and cut towards the leg. And you want that the angle needs to be right. If you think about the angle, you want to be delivering the power just off at an angle. So it's a clear document and right into the, into the leg here. With the bucket, you're probably going to go for the knee. With the sword, you're going to go for the, for the, for the leg. The, the angle is the same, whichever. So you've got the raise nice and slow. Again, think about the center lowering, 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 lowering. Just chaining it nice and slow. And then <laughs> coming in off the leg. Just to the ground and on the hips. That's so very good. Yeah, again, this is a kind of hard thing to imagine, but um, this kind of Joe down posture, so this, this posture up at the top is actually a really common posture in sort of a really common tactic people take. If you look at kendo matches, they take this posture a lot because for the reason why it's very easy to strike, from, especially in kendo. But it's a really common tactic in terms of sword because it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically the best position I can apply power through. So if I have a style which is about cutting through the other person's center line, it makes total sense to go to this position from this position. And then other schools which focus on a little bit more, they'll, they'll probably tend to come in different positions or different positions like this. But imagine that you're basically baiting the other person to get to that position. So I want them to come into the position. I want them to come in 
This is the defender, actually. So the attack is actually following the other person up. So this, 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 but I'm, 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 we're kind of goading each other to go further into this posture. But feel at any point, and I can also come out of it. So I should also have a kind of control in the movement. But just imagine that this is kind of tricky, but just imagine as you come up, you're really following the other person up as they come up, as they come up, as they come up, as they come up. They come up. So, and then it's done, boom, and then it's coming at that point. But just imagine that kind of, you're kind of really kind of goading each other to come up as you come up. So I'm basically trying to entrain myself to their movement and then break the rhythm of it. So I'm trying to get them into my pattern and then wham, and then I surprise them with, with something else. So this is a kind of, this is also a tactic that's not, not totally clear if I just follow the pattern of it. Yeah. So get the sense of I'm actually trying to, I'm trying to entrain them into my pattern. And then wham, coming into it. And you're coming out of it. Right. So that's it. Perfect. Okay, we'll go to the other side of it now. So again, you've got the same motion. And imagine now you've got the other person coming up. So I'm trying to get to this position where I can basically safely respond to it. Same time, you, or their, their, their partner's coming up at the same time. So you've got the, the, the classic um movement from the kumitachi is the sense of coming back holding the line and finding this pattern this way so you've got the same kind of motion i'm matching it but i'm dropping back not just matching it but trying to get a sense of the center line so just play with here going here and then thrusting back onto the center line so i'm looking to take again take the control of the center line so you've got raise 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 Clack. you've got to get tap I wedge into it and then think about coming forward into, into the center line. That's Right. Yeah, so in terms of this move or this reply, in, in terms of the kumitachi when we're doing it, we're looking to kind of snap onto the wrist, right? So snap onto the wrist. And at that point when I snap, that's when they're coming underneath with the, that second attack, the ski. So just play now with it. It's the sense that you, you've got this pattern, this, and then imagine the person's coming through with the ski. But in this case, I'm looking to finish the form. So in the, in the kumitachi, in the kata, I come back with it and block it, and then we continue. In this case, play with this, you've got this, you're going to go into it, into it, they come through, and think of entry to the back, cutting through the back. So you're going to go now like this, one, two, you press up, change it, and enter right to the back. Raise, up, trying to drop onto the wrist, and then I change on the into it. Right to the back of the person. So that's, that's the classic Yurimi movement. Oh, oh. And again, the same problem with the Arimi, I don't want to make it a round movement. So think of this really as an, as an Arimi, so you've got this, 
what I don't want to do is like this, where it becomes like a big round room. So I think this is very fine angles as well. As you come up to here, you've got the center line. So the person's coming off the center line to attack you. So all I really need to do is come down the line and then come to the back. But your 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 entry is really like a ribbon angle. You've got this, this kind of movement. This, 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 this way. And if you want, you can also play with the sword in a way where you're kind of suppressing the person onto the back and then coming in this way. So you can use this really in different ways. But anyway, you've got there. That really fine entry in. And come through with it that way. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Good. Great. So, get okay, the main ideas here is like the, how the Saburi training, or like why we do the Saburi training. One, one reason, really clear, is that it trains patterns which we later do in the Kumi Tachi. But the other reason is also teaches body mechanics, which we really use all the time in terms of Taiki Suwo. And the other part of it, again, we're I was talking about Bernie again. It's like you want to use these in a way like strategies of footwork patterns and, and, and not only footwork patterns, but, but, but intention movements. Like how do I get to the back of the person without giving away the sense of line too much or all these kind of kind of issues. So and the Saburu teach these are really basic, kind of very basic movements, but those ideas are really kind of locked into those forms. And that's one of the reasons we practice it, apart from being a friend, that's the other reason. They teach kind of strategies of entry. So okay. We will see. Great. Thank you.